Native Lamb Pod is a production of iHeartRadio in partnership with Reason Choice Media. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome home, y'all. This is episode 32 of Native Lamb Pod. We are so happy to be here with you all today. We got a lot going on. I want to start this episode by dropping something so exciting. We are going to be broadcasting live all week next week at the oh, Democratic we. National Convention. Tiffany every and Andrew, day, every what's going day. on besides Three, one, that? Two, we come every to the day. East, we come Don't to get no ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we are so, so excited and thrilled. We have some incredible guests coming your way. Um, it's the first time we'll be streaming on YouTube live um, every single evening. Those episodes will also drop the next day. Um, and we'll also be on with Breakfast Club. Uh, Thursday morning and Friday morning recording those shows Wednesday night and Thursday night from the DNC for this yeah. historic convention. So I'm pumped, y'all. Yeah, me I'm too. I'm excited too. And that I, deep I'm dish like though, super... that deep dish, that deep dish <laughs> tip. <laughs> tip is going to eat deep dish. Too. De- I'm I can't gonna even try say deep it. dish, but I'm not into it. Yeah, I'm so not into it. We're gonna but I'll get you it. into it, friend. Well, we got about eight thousand recommendations from y'all. So <laughs> thank welcome you, home, family. y'all. Thank, thank y'all you. for sending the, the pizza recommendations. Yes. But I'm super, I'm super excited about Chicago. We all know that I like being in person with y'all together. Um, so I'm excited that we'll be together, but I'm just excited about the direction, the vibe. It's a vibe. It so is. I'm, I'm happy. I just well, need to remember to bring my uh, chargers for my clippers since I have to clip my hair every day. I got you. Andrew, please <laughs> let me try to shave your hair because oh, I've never done it and no. I think I can do it. Hey, wait, wait, Andrew, idea. you don't have any hair. All I have to do is get uh, it off. It, I can it do that. It shows up. I promise okay. you. See, Here's right now we're only doing this once a week. See, catch okay. me in the in the between times, okay? It sounded like Andrew was about to call you the B word. That's all I want to say. I said, big <laughs> all the time. Idea. He did it all the big time. And you know idea. that give me the giggles. But don't even oh start with it. God. Anyway, Y'all remember New York? She fell out the chair. She was always She literally fell out, fell out. She's so crazy. But <laughs> this is what I do idea. want to happen. If Tiff's yeah. cut, clipping your hair, I would like Andrew to do my ponytail. We've I got been you. trying to see I got these you. Caroline, um, these Caroline vibes. That's my I've been doing it for nine years. I got you. I know. It's so dope. Okay. So today, before we get to the convention next week, um, we have a lot to talk about, y'all. Yeah. So I, my topic of choice is going to be Ron DeSantis's version of Florida A and M University, which might mm. mean there may not be a Florida A <sighs> and M University. Mm. So mm. I want to talk about that. What y'all got? I so I'm really first of all I'm coming to y'all live, live all the way live from, her from home uh, studio Martha's where she's Vineyard recording her uh, new and album. It's a vibe uh, on the vineyard, it vibe. Um, and so a, it's been a lot of conversation around Donald Trump and his um, insults to Vice President Harris. Yeah. And I want to get a sense from y'all on how you think she should respond, if she should respond, and if she's not responding, who should respond? Because I volunteer as tribute, so I want to get into that. I love okay. that. I love okay. that. And I did uh, just want to add to the conversation today by embracing this really historic uh, endorsement that um, the Harris Walls ticket received um, this week from the oldest and largest civil rights organization in the Hispanic community, LULAC. And I'll tell everybody what LULAC is and to challenge us to answer the question of whether we think this first ever endorsement might be a sign of some things to come when it comes to the changing demographics of America and potential for future political alliances to build black, brown, other power. That's what we need. And so in addition to Tiff and these insults, I'm um, speaking to someone who's just a walking insult. Donald Trump did an interview with Elon Musk. We also oh, make sure God. we throw that in there. Um, and all of that will be topped off by our favorite part of the show, which is hearing your questions or your comments um, and getting into that as well. You know, it's not a Native Land Pod episode without hearing from our NLP fam. So we That's cannot it. wait to hear from y'all. If y'all see my sister on the street, don't cuss her out too much about this deep dish pizza. She is going to try it next week. I've heard it from everybody. <laughs> I heard it from all y'all. I got it. I got to uh, try deep dish. We love, love it. it. Okay, y'all. So we're going to get into this episode. So uh, first up, we wanted to talk about all of the many insults that are being hurled in Kamala Harris's direction. Um, and then one of the critiques has been that she's not doing enough interviews. Oh, uh, Yeah. The yeah, on Fox. I, mean, well, I want to talk about that before we talk about the insults. Can we okay. do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So they've been saying a lot that Kamala Harris is MIA and they don't know why she's not doing any interviews before her acceptance speech 
um, at the convention. I have some strong feelings about this. I want to know what y'all think. Should she be doing no, interviews right I now? I want to hear what you, I want, I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, well, my thoughts are that Kamala Harris is an incredible speaker. She's uh, We've seen it at the, um, doing her stump speeches at all of the campaign rallies. I think that there's an opportunity for her to really reset, and we've not seen that since she became the top of the ticket, right? She has energized the base. Um, voter registration is up in most battleground states for Democrats, not for Republicans. It's actually declining for Republicans per reporting. So if that all that excitement exists and you can have earned media covering you without you paying for the advertisement, I just don't see where you go wrong there. Of course, we've talked ad nauseum on this show about why I think she should be doing conservative outlets, but I'm talking about all kinds of outlets. Even Luke Campbell was smart enough to run his thing back with Kamala Harris. I might do the same thing. He ran his interview back with her from four yeah. years ago because people are just thirsting to hear from her. So I think she cannot miss speaking to people as she gets to her nomination speech. I don't think she has to be cold until that moment. What do y'all think? Well, I so as a journalist, I'm never going to advocate not talking to the press. So right. I do think there is something different. Like, earn media, yes, by all means, because she's running a campaign. But I do think there are some serious issues that need to be addressed um, and that the American people would want to hear from her about. What's key for me, a lot of times when people build, you know, this huge crowd, and this extends from politics to entertainment and everything in between, I would love for people to take that power and empower Black journalists at these different yeah. outlets. Um, mm -hmm. One, I think you get a more thorough interview that is someone who is at least familiar, um, who's in the community and of the community, who can have an intellectual Q&A, uh, an intellectual exchange of, of idea, I ideas and ideas. Um, so I would love to see her at this moment tap into an Aaron Haynes at the 19th and do an interview. Aaron has interviewed her several times. Tap into a Joy Reid at MSNBC. Yeah. Um, tap into um, niche media. You know, sit down with Michael Harriet at the root and, and watch people lose their minds. Real I now. think the Beltway media has failed us. I watched the um, interview with, with Dana Bash. Um, with J.D. Vance, and I was just baffled at the um, questions that she did ask and the questions that she didn't ask. Uh, and and I, I just think it's a failure. Um, no shade to her. Uh, I worked with her 24 years ago at CNN, but it's just I, I, the way the mainstream media has failed us. Um, so, yeah, I would like to see her sit down. There are questions. Uh, I think people do have questions about having a woman lead the country uh, as, as a wartime president. There is a burgeoning war with Iran that could break off. I'd want to hear her comments on that. I think there are some de defectors who still have concerns about Palestine. I'd want to hear her clear thoughts on that and giving them in sound bites on the campaign speech. There's not the opportunity for follow up. Um, so it's yeah. not a criticism um, of her that she hasn't done it. Like we're trying to win an election right now. That's but right. I do look forward to her having a sit down. And I think a sit down is better than a press conference. Um, so I would definitely totally. advise if I had the ear of her campaign, advise against a press conference. But a sit down interview with a serious journalist, not an entertainer, um, not you can do all those things, but you need to sit across from a serious journalist um, to tackle some of these weightier issues that you don't always get into on the campaign trail. So I look forward to when she does it on her time and her schedule. And I hope she does it with someone in the community and of the community. Andrew, what do you think? I think they've done it perfectly. I think they've done it right. I think mm. it was important for her to get out there, define herself before an audience. Listen, the landscape changed overnight for her, Literally. right? They were racing in one direction as a supportive cast to Joe Biden, which she has, which she has been, and she is still the vice president. Um, but 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 she was launched into this. And I got to say, she has shown up, at least so far as I can assess, near perfectly um, um, in her choices and the way that she has handled things and the way that she's adjusted in real time, um, I think, on the stump. And I, I, I think rather than. To just say, I think sometimes the media have this superiority complex in, in the sense that they are the ones to ask the questions that are intuitive and that get to the heart of what it is. When in truth, for most of these folks, they are trying to get that moment that allows their interview to go viral so that they become the superstar within the network and the yeah. look to person and that kind of thing. Precisely. And so there's a bit of self-interest here that I think deserves being acknowledged. I, I think she will do it. She will do it in her timing. And I think um, Kamala Harris needs to stay on her script run this campaign from their campaign plan and not allow 
the, 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 the voices, and I'm speaking and thinking particularly of those on Fox who have made this a very central theme there. Why have mm. they made this a central theme there, that she's running from the press, not talking to the press? Well, they are trying to suggest and see the idea that the woman's not bright enough to sit in a room with another bright person in exchange. Well, she isn't Donald Trump. We know he is unable and incapable uh, of that. She, however, isn't, I think, leave people wanting more rather than having had enough. And I think she's leaving a lot of people salivating, wanting more of her. And I think that beats the alternative, which is we've had enough. I'm changing the channel. I just want to push back on this a little bit. Andrew, does your um, idea about her running a near perfect campaign and having people salivate, salivating for more do you want to think about the fact that it's 82 days left? Because That's you... all, the, the, all the more reason. Hmm. All the more reason. Yeah, they, I, 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 think I think it creates some stimulus in people, some craving in people. Um, I think what ultimately will happen is there will be this come down and a settling by all of us. And I mm -hmm. think that that's fine. Um, but while she has the wave... And has the ability to expand this campaign into states where we are right now not competitive. I will tell you, it isn't the American people out there clamoring for her to do interviews. They're not. They want to see her on rallies. They want to hear her on the stump. Yeah. They want to hear the fight in her voice. They want to see the eye roll. They want They want it all. But they're not out here clamoring for her to sit down with with that's with true. with an interviewer. They're just not. I don't know if that's it's true. Inside. I think there are some folks who do want to hear because now. The like, interviewer let me, wants let, it. Well, I don't just think it's the interviewer. I think well, there's one thing that Lennard said in this John, John Carl piece where he was talking about main character energy, talking about Joe Biden not having it. But Kamala has all the main character mm. energy. And it was it's interesting because I do think like I even maybe it's because I do this stuff, but I'm like, I want to see how she shows up now because it has switched. like we know her in that main character yeah. energy. But a lot of the country hasn't seen her in that way. So I kind of want her. And then, you know, there's also this, like you said, the the nonsense as Tip would say on Fox, where they've been saying like, oh, she can't sit down. Right. Oh, and when she's when she's on the fly, she stumbles. That's why Donald Trump wants to challenge her to three different debates. I want to I want her to prove them wrong. She will because there I are agree. some folks who are underestimating her. And I think in this time frame, what you can't have is an underestimation become apathy. And I think yeah. it can easily turn into that if you're not. Um, I, I know what you're saying about the overexposure for candidates normally, but in 82 days, is it really going? Are you really going to run the risk of overexposure? I think you can't she's get enough exposure. The, what she is, what she's doing is she's running up the numbers of people who want to see her, hear from her, maybe reward her with the presidency because they are yeah, so maybe. energized by what they have seen from her. Mm -hmm. And I and I believe her superpower here is being underestimated and then showing up and clearing up all the faces, clearing mm. it up completely. And the people who won't, who won't vibe with her aren't going to vibe with her ever on, on, right. on that exactly. level. They're just not. So I think, hey, play with the people, bring you to the party, those who looking like they're trying to wink and dance with you. Um, like some of these folks that we've seen out in Arizona who have come out and said, we're Republicans, but we be yeah. we, we, we are in favor of minds. the republic because she's out there doing it her way right now. Right. Yeah, I hear That's you. why I, she's changing Tiff was Tiff wanted to weigh in about five minutes ago. I hear I'm well, sorry. But I'm no, done. I'm happy that, no, that I waited because everything y'all are saying is like, yes, yes, yes. Andrew, I think you're absolutely right. It is the Beltway press who is pressed for her to do an interview. It is not the constituents. All of us work in this space. You know, I've covered politics yeah. for 24 years. Andrew, you've worked in politics Andrew you are a politician you know so we have a different Recovery. I think lens I know you're you're Recovering. a man of the people so we're all people of the people but we have a different lens into it so it's like yeah I get Angela's point like I want them to prove her wrong yes. I don't really care if she proves Fox News wrong or not like they are they've already been proven wrong you right. know I, for me I think um it's just an opportunity um, for her to answer some weightier questions. Agreed. So yeah. I get your point, Andrew, about Agreed. the overexposure, but I get your point, Angela, like, no, go out there and throw a punch and show them that you can do it. My complaint is, I guess, more to your point, Andrew, the interviewer themselves who want this viral moment, who would yeah. rather fail the country. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, just to do, you know, both sides politics. And I just wanted to complain about what I'm saying with that um, interview on CNN with um, uh, uh, J.D. Vance. I just felt like it was such a missed opportunity 
opportunity. They spent so much time talking about Walls's uh, military service, and there was no question about Donald Trump's lack of military service. No. There was no reference to Cadet Bonespur saying he couldn't no. serve. There was no reference to the comments that he reportedly made about veterans. Mm. There was no reference to the policy he instituted that was harmful to veterans. And we, they're doing this like gossip type um, interview. Yeah. And she, one of the questions that she posed to J.D. Vance is, did he think Kamala Harris was black? Who gives a good god dang if you See, think Kamala Harris is black? Right, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah, disrespectful that's question. Moment. You don't get to tell black people who is black or not. It is so out of pocket to even ask the question. And so at that point, I'm looking like to me at that point, Dana Bash looked like one of them. You know, it was like, what a missed opportunity before the American people. It could have been a fruitful interview. And that's what I'm saying. I don't think that was her intention. I think she wanted to do um, a good interview. But that is the difference between someone asking a question who centers the comfort of white people, more specifically, the comfort of conservative white people. And everything you do is from that prism. It's and from it's that frame. But that, and so the people, right the American now. people are like, we don't give a damn about Absolutely. her sitting down with an interview but like that. If that's thing. what we're getting. I'm not even talking about that. You actually named three. Three journalists who we're biased. They are yeah. our friends, but we <laughs> a, they're absolutely top notch. Cream, cream sure. de la cream, yeah. like cream of the crop. They are amazing. And you talked about Aaron Haynes. You talked about Michael Harriet. You talked about Joy Reid. Joy was the person who walked and t- did the walk and talk with Kamala Harris, yes. rolling out her 2020 campaign. This is the perfect time for her to come back and say, hey, um, Joy Reid, let me tell you what's been going on since the last time we yeah, got together and did a walk and talk. So I don't think she has to go and do the mainstream interview that earned media peace their way. She can, to Ar- to Andrew's point, do it her way. And I think part Agreed. of that is saying, hey, let, let us show you what real interviews look like. Let us show you the type of profile piece that should and could be done she also should be going on um these morning shows that reach the flyover states she should be going on i still think fox because it's not just a fox news platform there are tons of viewers they are beating cnn and msnbc hand over fist right now with viewers she still has to convert some folks and add to her base that's how you win an election with the electoral college until it's abolished we got a mini pod coming up on that one day well, so long I, guys I so long guys angela that, can i yeah i got some push back I just want to say, as long as she pimps the space for her benefit. Everybody talking, everybody talking. I I just want to say, I got a little bit of pushback on that, but we got to go to a break. So let's go to a break and we'll pick it up on the other side. So we are back, y'all. Y'all can tell we're way too excited about all this because we were, yes. were talking over each other we're, uh, trying to get it in. I just want to say, Angela, Fox News, I was with you on that. And again, I'm with you still so long as she does it to the point of her benefit. Use yeah. it. Use this, uh, the escape. Understand exactly what they're going to do to you. Know what moment they are looking for, but also be very clear about the moment you're looking for. Yes. And then drive it to that end. Because I think that's what Donald Trump did with the black press. He went he there to did. say, I'll call a nigga a nigga in their face. He did. he did. And, and, that, and, and excuse that's the language, y'all, but that's, no, what, I that's like what he, he did. I didn't like that at all. I didn't, I didn't like it either. But I think what would have been incredible, Tiff, and like to your point, if we were advising her campaign, we'd have been like, OK, he went to NABJ. You couldn't go to NABJ. Sit down with a panel of black journalists on your time at the, at the VP's residence. You know what I mean? Like answer it right away. Show him how it should have been done. Show him what presidential looks like. I think that would have been incredible. Yeah. I also think to Andrew's point. You know what they're going to say. I wish that we could have done our sparring episode, but Tiff is too cool to be in character with me. We're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, We're going to do it anyway. But the thing is, like, show her. We can do a a sparring round with a a fake, a faux faux Fox interviewer and show her what some of those answers should look like. I think that it was. mm -hmm. The good news is, y'all, I think we can have it both ways. I, I, I think we can have it both ways. I think we're doing both. I think she's doing both. That yeah, hopefully. and when and when I say sit down with a black journalist, that doesn't mean sit down with a black journalist and talk about quote unquote black issues. That's right. Um, you know, like we there are serious journalists who happen to be black who are perfectly capable and well versed and well read on issues happening in the Middle East, on the rise of the global South, on economic issues, on domestic policy, yeah. um, and issues that are relevant and uh, um of the community who I think do a better job of speaking to the rising majority of this country and better reflecting the demographics of this country. And that's why you see people 
people increasingly tuning out cable news um, and increasingly finding alternative um, aspects of uh, President-elect Kamala Harris held a rally um, on Saturday Mm -hmm. and three million people streamed it on YouTube. And sadly, none of the cable networks carried it. You know, they are still 10 years behind the time. They've learned nothing since 2016. And it's just devastating to see. So while we're throwing out opportunities for her to sit down with um, a a panel of black folks, Native Land Pod also volunteers as a tribute. We would love to come to the VP residence again and sit down and uh, have a conversation with her. So I'll throw our hat in that ring as well. But I I did want to shift topics too, because while we're talking about what she's talking. Can I ask you one question? Yes, ma'am. Do you think that we should figure out if cable news isn't going to cover these rallies, maybe we figure out how to stream them on our page. That's a good ass idea. What Let's do you think, how, Andrew how Gillis? Cosign, cosign. Maybe we should. I mean, we only got 82 days. Let's figure it out. It, Nick, help us. We can. need to figure it out. But don't yeah, come Nick. on because when you come on, it's an echo. But can Nick, you help us, Nick? <laughs> yeah, Nick. <laughs> Nick is giving us a thumbs up. President there it is. Yay. Uh, panels. And, but the crazy part is they did that for Donald Trump. They gave him like they billions did, of dollars did. in free advertising in 2016. And they're making the same mistake when he held that uh, asinine press conference where he just stood there and flailed about and acted ridiculous. And uh, the 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 cable news networks were all too eager because they're looking for that cable news uh, boon in the ratings that they once had. But if we know anything about America, America don't like a repeat. And you can see already that people like, we've seen this sideshow already and we're done. Speaking of sideshow, I want to talk about these insults that um, Donald Trump has been hurling uh, at President-elect Harris. And it is, I find them so uh, infuriating. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to talk to you guys and get your thoughts on how people should respond. Cause I have to say, I'm really, well, first of all, I didn't know everybody was going to be wearing glasses. So while I make my point, I'll put on a pair of, um, give it to us. Are. My glasses. Grab one of them on. good, good ties. Okay. One of them good ties. Well, y'all didn't tell too. me we were all wearing glasses. Today. Well, my eyes morning. were burning. So it wasn't, well, your glasses are cute. Thank you. So my point is, um, I there is this philosophy in politics introduced to us by our forever floatist, um, Michelle Obama, who, you know, when they go uh, low, we go high. And mm-hmm. I just don't think that's necessarily the way to do it now. Now, I don't I even think, know how to do that. But <laughs> but you're not running for president. That's so true. I think President elect Harris should do that. Mm-hmm. I don't think on the debate stage that she should engage um, in the mudslinging that you know pigs do that like I she doesn't like need to, see to a little mud. herself but she can sling mud in a way that's not a trafficking and insults you I know think what's other so people... bad about this tiff we what? could have practiced this but you don't want to role play with me <laughs> well on, i'm on not the so here's my so angela suggested that we like are in I'm character mad. and do like a mock debate so since she's referenced it i want the viewers to know <laughs> that we do like a Twice. mock debate and like we're in character the whole time and I do feel like I like this sounds like an SNL open to me. Like I'm not going to be in character. It's not actually debate prep. You know, in debate prep, you have the actual candidate and somebody playing their opponent. And it's just not my what I do. But Angela, I'm sure a lot of y'all would like to see Angela and Andrew in character. I would tune in. I just didn't want to do it. But y'all Thank drop a comment. Thank you for channeling how I felt all those <laughs> many times I was sitting in debate Andrew prep Andrew at first was like, no, I don't want to do it. And yeah. then you were like, okay, I'll do it. So I feel like y'all are on the same page with each no, other now. No, I was sitting there like, Andrew, why are we, we doing this? Y'all aren't even real. But they, oh, are you kidding me? It was the most serious. Absolutely. Because Andrew got mad at me. You were you, how many debate preps were you mad at me, Andrew? I'm not sure how many I walked out of. Maybe too many to, I mean, it got it got under my skin. But it was so perfect to do it that way rather than being on a stage. Yeah, where was ready. you may hear these and things. And you kicked ass every debate. So. Well, he, 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 which, no, I don't know about that, but I will tell you this, as it relates to how Kamala should handle it, and I'm not yeah. an expert here, but but just as, you know, I know it went viral and that kind of thing, but when I said, I'm not calling Ron DeSantis a racist, mm-hmm. I'm simply saying that the racists believe he's a racist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it caught off, but I wasn't launching a direct attack against him. I was simply validating that the people he rolling with Certainly believe he's part of their company or else they yeah. wouldn't be there. And I and I, I agree. I think it's not so much a rise above it as it is. She doesn't have time for the games. Right. That's this right. is actually right. the adult stage. That's right. right. You, you, we're, right. We are competing to be the leader of the free world. And for people who want to kick rocks and play games, this isn't the platform for you. Precisely. And I think I she. Think I, I think it. that is a level of rise above that I would want uh, from her. But to to trade barbs with this guy, no, she ought to look not only to the task, but to the task and above the task by saying, "Look, this isn't a kid sport. 
I'm not here for yeah. games. I, I, well, uh, moderators, are we? Is this what this is? Because it is. Also, <laughs> that, Andrew, one of the. It. Oh, go ahead, sorry, Tiff. Well, I just wanted to say that's part of the reason why I didn't, because it's a lot of serious issues. So that's part of the reason why I didn't want to do like be in character. I I'm like, this, people's lives are on the line, yeah. you know, and it just. I, I didn't like it. I wanted to, um, Angela, if you want to go ahead and make your point, because I want to toss to the sound yeah. um, that I, um, that Donald Trump um, uh, comments he made about her Time Magazine cover. But go, you you go ahead and then we'll, we'll go to that next. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, there are serious, there are serious films where people are in character. There are serious, sure. um, you know, skits or, 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 yeah, but there are also people who are talking about serious issues. I don't think it's just about being in character. It's about showing someone who may not be getting that guidance in debate prep how to respond, you know. And and I think one of the things that, Andrew, you also did really well in debate was facial expressions. Sometimes you're not going to have an opportunity to respond. So what do you say? Do you shake your head? Do you roll your eyes? Do you say, you do you mouth Right. Like there's so many things that you can do. And I think that those those points of guidance need to be, need to be given. But uh, Tiff definitely has a good one on what not to do, not just in a debate, but even in an interview. So I can't wait. Yeah. To so take take a listen. Um, this was in uh, it was not an interview, but it was a, a sit down fanboy session with <laughs> um, Elon Musk and Donald Trump. And so you guys have likely seen Time magazine's cover uh, featuring the president elect mm-hmm. on it. And <laughs> this is how Donald Trump characterized the cover. Take a listen and we'll talk about it on the other side. But she's getting a free ride. I saw a picture of her on Time Magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. It was a drawing. And uh, actually, she looked very much like our great first lady, Melania. She she (laughs) didn't look she didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that. Right. Who the hell is Camilla? Who is Camilla? (laughs) Okay, so so many issues. With Why does he think she looks like Melania, Tiff? Why did she Listen, what, number one, nasty. not on... Right, precisely. He so nasty. this is what I wanted to say about that. Um, number one, not on Melania's best day, okay? But the, the rest of it is, this is classic plantation politics that's mm-hmm. all too familiar to Black women. And Nick, wow. get ready for the bleep button because this is going to require some swearing. I think Donald Trump looks at her... And he, there is an attraction. So it, it's, and, and I think it's something that's familiar to, to a lot of black women that we've experienced. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to know if he wants to f- her or fight her, you mm-hmm. know? And it is the Oof. same way you take it black back to plantation politics of black women being uh, lusted after mm-hmm. the, their oppressors. Um, and it was with disgust and lust where black women were raped, you know, mm-hmm. like they, they, were, they were there as to take and do whatever you wanted with them. And we bore the, the bruises and the babies of these men. And so when I heard him speak about her with this lust that, oh, but she's this beautiful woman, but he was also the subtext of hate. Like, I hate this woman because she makes him feel small and that he wants to dominate her in a way by insulting her. It was so disgusting to hear him speak about her mm-hmm. and I, the the intentional mispronunciation yes. of Madam President-elect's name, uh, I just found so incredibly distasteful, but also not surprising at all. I knew what it was immediately on site. It was recognizable. Yeah. And I think that is the kind of thing that she will have to rise above. I think on the other side of that, can't nobody clap back at you and snatch your soul and destroy your life like a black woman chorus, okay? Let your surrogates do that. Let the people around you do that. Let us come snatch this man's dyed Wait. yellow hair, bald head, Every time he opens no his mouth, because the heads. reason why they attack so many black women, our sister Brittany Packnett Cunningham said this on our live show from Miami, is because we are the least protected. We are the least uh, uh, defended. And so if we lock arms and become so impenetrable, this is the Bishop Brittany, as Angela calls her. Bishop Brittany said that we lock arms and become so impenetrable that he will know better. So I don't know how we coordinate these attacks, ladies, but my sisters out there know exactly what need to be done. Y'all understand the assignment. And I know we certainly volunteer as tribute to help brothers echo know these too. clapbacks. Yeah. Brothers, and brothers and I think have brothers have to do it too. Absolutely. I, I just think, I know I, I keep one. I have to really work hard because I keep one in the chamber. 
And so I, I got an acid ass tongue and I'm always ready. First time somebody say something smart to me, I'm ready to clap back. And it takes so much work not to do that. And it's like, I don't know. I'm looking at him say this and I'm looking at these mm. two fists and I'm like, <laughs> it's yeah. go time, girls. Let's do it. You know, like I'm just ready for the fight. I feel enthusiastic. I feel joyful. I feel hopeful. I feel angry and I feel pissed off. And that's a bad combination for black women to feel because it's like, yeah, you want to go to war? You want to have a war with black women? Yeah. Bring it because but we're ready. He's yeah, terrified you, of that war, you, by the way. He is terrified of it, but also there are other folks that should be terrified and they're on the same side of the aisle. I think what's frustrating about yeah. this moment to me is Donald Trump almost feels like he has license to do this because she has been so not protected by the Democratic yep. Party. This didn't start with Donald Trump's insults. This started within the party. There were yes. folks ready to have a whole new primary to suppress a whole bunch of votes who voted in a primary for a Biden-Harris ticket who were ready to throw it all out including y'all's favorite and first black president ready to throw it all away to mm. have a primary to put in a new candidate so that Kamala Harris would not have an opportunity. If you're that, not that, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell it all today. But if say you, more. What do you mean that he wanted to have a primary? Like what? I'm saying that Kamala Harris was not Barack Obama's choice. Barack Obama was backed into a corner on that Sunday when the official announcement went out from Joe Biden saying that he was stepping down and then a tweet went up saying that he was endorsing Kamala Harris. But based he, on what? How do you know it wasn't his he choice? He shocked everybody. Are you kidding me? Nancy Pelosi. No, I, I'm just trying to say smoke. factual. Like, as was they reporting about? Like, how do you know she was not his choice? I got sources. Okay, so you spoke to somebody who I said President sources. Obama does I not support for Kamala a Harris. Fact that Kamala Harris was not um, Barack Obama's choice, and I'm telling you, I know for a fact. No, I just, I'm shot. saying this for the audience. Well, now, the good news is, saying, is he got to be there now. They said that she that was Nancy not Nancy Pelosi. His choice. I know for a fact that she was not Nancy Pelosi's choice. I know for a fact she was not Barack Obama's choice. And I know for a fact they thought they were going to have a contested and convention. And Angela, I think you, we all had the, we all three of us, I think, okay. had the intuitive <laughs> instincts that this was not going to be the party. That ain't the fight that they wanted. And I loved the rapid organization of folks like Joteca. Folks yes. um, who take took ED, from her who lead. With black women. And then absolutely. Because without, I mean, y'all were coordinated because y'all been doing this for months now, meeting and readying yourselves for, for whatever. The, for, okay, I'm, this, I this, apologize. This, no, no, no but I just want, just to give you some context, Andrew, four years ago, Joteka organized all of us together because they weren't trying to pick a black woman vice yeah. president. And yeah. when Kamala Harris was on the list with Big Gretch, we were like, oh, no, 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 no. So folks have been ready. Like, folks yeah. have been ready because they know what it's like. And we've talked about this, to be passed up for promotion, to be looked over, to be unprotected, as Tiff said. And so I'm just saying, like, there are folks who, in this same party, yeah. needed this same protection of the black woman, of the CBC member to endorse them so they look credible. And for those same people to turn their back on her in the yeah. 11th hour yeah. is like, wow. So no, I just I think that we need to call it out. I'd like to see some apologies. I let it go. Well, I will. But I, 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 I agree with your point. I would just say that's not what gave Donald Trump license. What oh, gets yes, white it supremacy did. is what from birth. Yes. From the moment he could move, and it's on both sides of the aisle. That is uh, exactly no that way. Oh, come yeah. That's my only you, point. You heard my position it's not party on it. Specific. You heard it my is position. not partisan, like, child. There's no way we dump him with no commitment. Yeah. Toward her. And you had yeah. the same people saying dump him at the same time saying, oh, but we need a process. So That's I can't right. say it should. I'm sorry. We I have wanna, a process. I, I want right. to pick up on that point. We got to take a quick break, but I want to pick up on that said, point because it was a lot of it was a lot of people in Congress. And I I'm kind of with Angela. I want to etch on my gravestone. Everybody who was supporting. We see you. We see you. We over her. Yes. Child. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back on the other side. All right, we back from break. Okay, we all fired today, y'all. Yes. We got a lot of com we got a lot of comments and thoughts. Boy, Angela, I want to pick back up because Angela, know, Angela Andrew. got beef still. I so know, Angela and sources, I hate that I have this beef. Angela, and her damn sources. Angela, and her sources. Because I mean, in transparency, you guys, yeah. we we talked a lot about this uh, yeah, in, in the group chat. So I just wanted to be clear yeah. uh, where Angela was, was was getting her information from. So Angela has sources who uh, you know referenced President Obama. Um, I saw the. Uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, interview uh, on CNN and it was clear Girl. to me that there was beef between them. Can we play that? We don't even have 
know that sound. Can you find that sound, Nick? Because Tiff is right. But which which sound? Because it was so many times. You know, that just she the part where they shame. asked her about like, did she what? support Kamala Harris and like yes, what their so- relationship was like. Just in case we can't find that sound, yeah. um, Dana Bash asked um, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, had she um, mentored um, uh, uh, Vice President Harris? Had she offered her support? And um, Speaker Pelosi uh, was saying, well, you know, basically you you come and come, you have to be your own person, uh, which is an odd statement. And Especially then she she's talked got a about lot of her, acolytes. Right. right. In then she talked about her a winning elections. Bunch. And uh, Speaker, uh, former Speaker Pelosi um, endorsed her opponent. And so she talked about that. She's like, well, I endorsed, you know, her opponent um, in her race for sale. But she understands that. She knows how it goes. <laughs> it was not a very, it was clear watching it if you understood politics, mm-hmm. even if you didn't understand politics, it was clear that this is not a woman who was a fan of hers. But she was not the only member. I mean, I think that's the point, Angela, that you're trying to make is is not party specific. Like we are disrespected on both sides of the aisle. There were plenty of people who were like, no, it can't be Biden. But wait, 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 we're not about to gift it to her. And these conversations, conversations about, you know, it was gifted to her. She has won more elections than Donald Trump has. His first job in government was president of the United States. And arguably, he didn't win that. When you go back and look at the data, I want people to remember in 2016, they completely discarded and discounted 75,000 votes out of Detroit, Michigan. Now, let's just, that's the blackest city in Michigan. Let's just say, hypothetically, in 2016, that 60,000 black folks voted for Donald Trump. They didn't, but let's just say that. Even if 15,000 had gone to Hillary Clinton, she lost Michigan by 10,000 votes. Had those 15,000 votes gone to her, she would have carried Michigan and thus won the presidency. So they are already up to some trickery. So that's why I think when we see one of our own being attacked, when we see people before we've even gotten to an election, people on the Democratic side of the divide trying to rob her of this opportunity and trying to discount her, they did not want it to be black women versus Democrats. Mm-hmm. Because anytime you're on the opposite side of us, you are likely on the wrong side of history. And that's not a war you want. Yeah, I just want to say I have been down a rabbit hole at this point because I was trying to find this sound. And now I done found the times where Nancy Pelosi wasn't like willing to commit that Kamala Harris would be the best VP pick for Biden. That, mm-hmm. you know, like it's like there are so many things she asked was asked about. Um, anyway, it's I, I'm not going to. The point is, there is a lot of baggage on the Democratic side of the aisle. And that gives the other side license to insult um, Kamala Harris to come at her about her personal life, to talk about how she speaks, to talk about how she laughs, all of those things because sexism is real and racism is real. And sometimes it be your own people. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's my point today. And I know that this is an uncomfortable conversation, but if we don't have the uncomfortable conversation, we can't get to the apologies. I think even going back to last, I cannot believe that Barack Obama's endorsement of Kamala Harris was a video of a phone call. After all that, I just, I really can't. And I think that speaks <laughs> well, volumes. What was your issue with the, that, that it was a phone call? What was your issue with it? Like, the what, issue what was that like? the endorsement was a video that they recorded on Wednesday and dropped Friday. And it was a phone call of the two of them talking. I think that Barack Obama should have rolled his sleeves up and showed his ass up at a rally. That's what I think should happen, especially after what went down. You all know how Barack Obama looks when he's yes we can and hope and changey things, right? Like we know how he shows up. And I'm just saying he just did a very high donor dollar fundraiser for Joe Biden just a, a month or maybe it was six weeks six weeks prior, right? Where they yeah. showed up together. So why can't you show up for this woman who now needs you? I just, I think that it's very obvious and so clear. Well, he'll be speaking yeah. at the DNC on, on, on Monday. Monday night. We yeah. will be broadcasting live on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about it, we'll we'll anticipate his comments, but we'll be reviewing his comments on Tuesday. So and make sure, sure y'all tune into that. I'm sure it will be an unmitigated, uplifting, and soul-filled endorsement of be. Kamala Harris. But that by itself doesn't erase what mm-hmm. has happened within our party, and you don't need sources, Angela, to know you can go right to the the the, the printed papers yeah. and see exactly some of the gamesmanship that was being played. Tiff, he couldn't wait um, to bring up this piece. Talk about it. Say more, Angela, but say more, because I want to know your... 
Right. I, uh, well, what are your thoughts there, on, on there, the way oh, that President, former President Obama, what are your thoughts on how he showed up in this election cycle when it comes to President-elect Kamala Harris so far? Well, I'll just say, <laughs> I read this piece yesterday <laughs> from The Intelligencer. It was, um, I think it also re- we posted in, in, in New York Magazine, a long form piece, probably a 50 minute read or so, that took a hatchet mm. to Joe Biden's uh, record to um, took issue with Kamala Harris describing the work of their administration as having been Joe Biden's legacy, she says, of accomplishments over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. And the author of the piece goes on to basically obliterate that comment. Um, It goes further to say that Joe Biden's record doesn't even stand in the same sentence of achievement as Barack Obama's. It uses... Uh, the fact that Barack Obama was a twice elected president and appealed to, um, quote, moderates and ran up the center um, as having been a uh, campaign strategy thrown off by uh, Joe Biden. And if Kamala Harris wants to be elected president, that she needs to re-embrace the Obama strategy to winning her choice of vice president doesn't suggest that she is prepared to follow that model. Um, it. It it was Mm. irritating to me because it basically served as a foil. Joe Biden and his service to Obama as his vice president, unflinchingly in service to to, to the president, um, that his record would then be turned and then used as a foil to redefine and uplift Obama's legacy as president. There's nobody in America right now looking for a long form written piece about (laughs) setting (laughs) Obama's uh, record in historical context. Why? Because history serves as the ultimate mitigator of that. Was, uh, time, was um, President Obama participating in this or was this No, what I'm saying, I, I bring this up, y'all, because those of us in politics know that pieces like this don't just show up off the shelf from nowhere. They don't. They are sourced. They, it, it feels extremely personal. Mm. It, the, the attacks against a Biden and the quote unquote advice toward Harris around how she can win feels feels to me like a smack. And the fact that it goes to such great lengths to diminish the achievements of the administration, going even so far as to say that the reason why it isn't transformative is because policy in the next administration could simply reshift and change what what, what, what Biden and Harris put into place. Whereas in Obama's case, many attempts to change it have been made and none have been successful, which then makes him transformative, but doesn't make uh, but, but the same could have been true, right? The same is true. They're all legislative. It can in easily be followed up by a ratchet Congress and a ratchet administration and a ratchet court who undermines all of it. Any, there, ach- any of these achievements can be. A lot of his achievements be, were undermined too at that. You know, well, there's, so no I, doubt, there's no doubt about it. My, yeah. my, I don't, I don't want to enter the argument of whether Obama had a transformational transfer, um, administration yeah. versus Biden. I'm simply saying this debate is unnecessary. This yeah. piece should never have come out. Certainly not in this timing, especially when all the headlines are really on Kamala Harris Her audience sizes, her crowd sizes, and what she now has the opportunity to do as a historic uh, win should she clinch the nomination. And so I can imagine that if you thought that you might be the only in a generation to Mm -hmm. ever have had such a historic distinction, (laughs) that it might feel some sort of way right now. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that for a fact, but it might feel some kind of way. I mean, we got discernment. I, I like to say the black woman is the Holy Ghost. So I y'all, mean, probably, y'all got it, and the spirit runs through like, us too. I so know. all I'm saying is, is clearly you got a feels, black mama. It feels, it feels like a setup, and I'm glad that a lot of the mainstream has not focused on it because I think it could be divisive, um, um, and and, and greater public, but. These Democratic leaders that we have name checked so far to this point in in our conversation are are are, in my opinion, the type of friends you don't want to carry into a bunker. Well, I think that might be true. But speaking of setups, before we get into one that happened to fam, you, why don't we take a listener question and we're going to go right into that? There it is. Hey, Native Land Pod fam. Um, My question is, after watching everything these last few weeks with Donald Trump and Kamala, 
um, I could kind of see him doing one of two things. One, being so arrogant that there's no possible way and thinking that there's no possible way that Kamala could beat him in the election. And then two, throwing a temp temper tantrum because things are not going the way that he feel they should go. She's up in, um, in a lot of the polls and then her crowds are bigger um, at these rallies. Um, so I could also see him throwing a temper tantrum and saying, I don't want to play anymore. I quit. I'm done. If I didn't quit, I'm quitting. I don't want to play. Like, what would the GOP do? I know Trump has a lot on the line, um, especially with all the cases that he has against him. But what if he was to say, I quit so close to the election? Mm -mm. I said, it's never going it, to happen. It's intuitive. Never. I mean, I think it's it's good forecasting. Um, and by the way, we love in that Democratic blue um, that you're sporting. Um, but but the truth is, is this man's pride cannot allow him Period. to step. He, he the reason why he it, it has been in swivels, his head on a swivel for the last couple of weeks is because he is in complete and total astonishment that a man, that a human, that a white man could have the seat of power of the world at his fingertips and choose to walk away. He's, it, it would never have entered into Donald Trump's mind to, if it was argued for the sake of the country, step back, that he would step back. This just, it, it is inconceivable. And so for, for furthermore, to just add to it, the cases that you mentioned that he has on the line, that is his life. That is his future. And right now I'm convinced that this race for president has everything to do about staying out of jail and very little to do with his promise for the future of the country. In fact, he hadn't even made any promises for that. He's left that to Project uh, 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 2025. He, yeah. he, he can't even muster what it requires to set a vision to save himself. He's so mired in it. And then finally, I would just say this man has suggested that Kamala's crowd sizes have been um, AI um, um, <laughs> artificial intelligence influence that the audiences weren't really there. Y'all, yes. the man is a, a megalomaniac. He is an egotist. He's a sadist as far as I can, I'm concerned. Um, um, uh, but he ain't stupid. He is attempting to plot in, in the minds of his followers, his supporters, to suspend with the belief of what they see of their own eyes and believe me only. And this is the road to author to to authoritarianism that that even if they don't subscribe to his belief, maybe they throw off a belief in any set of facts. And that means when it comes to November and that bitch loses, he's going to say again that he didn't lose, that it was stolen. And he will have, I think, an even more dangerous revved up group of psychos who are prepared to burn this country to the ground before they let a black woman assume the helm of it. I think I think all of this is subterfuge, but preparation for what he ultimately wants to do, which is to election deny and suggest that something ain't right. It has been stolen. Yeah, that's what I think ultimately this is. Our producers have something they want us to hear that we have not heard yet. So it's a little surprise. Let's roll that. Um, well, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, but I flew from Houston to celebrate this great event where a lot of us came together and did what we were supposed to do, honey. And we're going to do this every year. Now, the Native Land podcast calls this August 10th. What you think about that? I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. We do what we supposed to do. We getting it. We getting it. Yo, that, let me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, what did the t-shirt say? I could, could y'all see the t-shirt? I don't know, but it was a folding chair. I saw the chair. folding chair. I saw the folding Let me chair. tell you. So August 10th, as y'all know, we talked about Agnosium. Um, Tip brought it up. Of course, that is what happened in <laughs> Montgomery. And I, I will just, I will just say that we uh, always encourage a folding chair, whether it needs to be used as a weapon or as your seat at the table. As Shirley Hello. Chisholm has influenced us, so with that, Hello. <laughs> and Shirley's legacy, we shall go to break. Hello. All right. So um, I have been really traumatized by, as an honorary Rattler, yes, what is honorary. happening at Florida A&M. Ron DeSantis, I feel like, is trying to take the thing down. Um, of course, recently, Timothy Beard was appointed as interim president. I have never in my black life, I sit on a board, I sit on the Wilberforce University board, I've never heard of an interim president 
sending any communication to 20 plus folks in leadership at a school requesting their resignations. We uh, understand what happened before literally, school started. Literally, right? I thought it's two weeks before. So either one way. week. Okay. Students are back next week. So one week before school starts, asking everybody to resign. Think about registration. Think about financial aid. Think about housing. Think about everything that has to happen to make a school function right before the fall semester begins. New kids coming on. Like, you have no idea. Like, who is this guy? Andrew, who is Timothy Beer? Who is this man? I I couldn't tell you. And the truth is, is I looked at his resume uh, when he was uh, appointed, and it looks like there would have been some overlap between my time at FAM and and, and uh, possibly when he was there. But then he took some time away, became a president of a community college and has come to us from a community college uh, by the selection of the board of trustees, all appointees, uh, practically of of the governor, uh, Ron DeSantis, who's taken really zero interest in Florida a and University up to this point. I wish we could return to that status quo of zero interest uh, uh, because it's better then his interests, because it has been proven over time when governors of this state take an interest in FAMU, it is never to our benefit. We end up with the short end, short end of the stick every single time. This man has been on the job one week, sent a letter a day, uh, 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 well, a day ago, two days ago, saying, I need everybody, uh, send me all your res- resignations effective immediately, and you have until tomorrow. Here, by the way, is a form to expedite the matter that you could just sign, and I'll accept it, and we'll keep moving on. These are individuals who sit at the helm of the university, its strategic direction, but also its day-to-day management, leadership, upkeep, and decision-making, and advisory role to the president. And I just wonder how a week on the job, Mm. you know who to get rid of and who not to get rid of of an entire university's leadership structure. And then who tolerates, what member of the board of trustees tolerates that kind of nonsensical move, right? If your critique of the previous president was that he didn't pay enough attention to the detail on a donation, you don't answer that with, um, ridiculousness, which is the best way, best description I can give to what we're experiencing here, where a week on the job, the man gets rid of all the leadership, save for, except for a few that he may decide to reject their uh, uh, resignations. And I've heard people say this before. Other presidents have come in and accepted the resignations of the senior leadership. Yes. That's when right. they are made permanent president of the university, That's right. That's they right. come in just as when a new administration is elected in Washington, they have months to plan for right. their incoming administration. They accept the resignations of the previous ones and they appoint their new administrations. But you have no, no experience as the president of the university here at FAMU. You've got no experience with these individuals enough to know who's additive and who's subtractive to the university mission in its course. And also who will be devastated at the end of the day. If you are a parent dropping your kid off on the highest of seven hills sometime this weekend or early next week, what confidence do you have that the institution is going to be of service to your child when the entire leadership structure has come undone. I will say this, Angela and Tiffany, I am a, a former member of the Board of Trustees. Mm-hmm. I am a former student body president at Florida a and University, a uh, alumni, lifetime member, and a giver to my institution. They have to answer for this. Yeah. And I believe that there's no, um, no other reason for this action other than that powers on high have given guidance and direction for this man to execute. And that is exactly what he is doing, not on the reliance of his own intelligence, leadership and guidance, because he's right now supposed to be a steady hand. That's what interims do. They steady the ship. This ain't steady in the ship. Well, you, and you're trying to burn it down. This yeah. And the one flag that I wanted to offer, too, is he does say in the letter that was um, dated the 12th, he requested everyone's resignation by the 13th. So literally one day. He says that this is in consultation with the board of trustees, the past university president, and from my observations, I have concluded that a change in our senior leadership team is necessary to move forward more effectively. Um, what's interesting is the last president didn't call for this. I'd be fascinated to hear what I, President Robinson said. He yeah. throws him under the bus and indicts him in this letter, this wide sweeping uh, 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 decision that he decides to make. And we haven't heard from Larry Robinson on on this. Larry's gone back to his teaching job now at, at, yeah. at the at the at the institution. But but I will also end here because I'm I, I am optimistic about the future of my institution, and that is I know 
that the foundation is solid, which means mm. the professors are going to show up. Yeah. The School of Business is going to continue to produce world class future business leaders and business owners and entrepreneur into the world. We're still going to be the largest contributor to the middle class and the and the growing uh, middle class of the state of Florida amongst black folks. We are going to continue to produce great lawyers, nurses, doctor, PhDs as the number one producer of 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 of. of masterial and doctoral degree holders in the black community. Family is going to continue to live up to its mission. It's mm-hmm. just highly unfortunate that this bill road bump of a man put in place by this governor and his sycophants on the board have the ability to fiddle with our greater, with our greater mission and task and destiny. But we're going to keep doing what we do because that's what we do. We're Rattlers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, it's, HBCUs have such credo. Um, President-elect Harris is a, a, an HBCU alum, a uh, Howard alum. She was on campus uh, this week welcoming uh, the right. students to Howard University. I think of all the prominent um, graduates of you? FAMU. I work with Will Packer, of course, whose films have grossed over a billion dollars worldwide. Um, I've been told, I, I haven't seen this information myself, so forgive me, this is anecdotal. Um, but my friends who I have a lot of friends who are Morehouse alum, they said that um, the the applications, they're getting like 30 plus thousand applications for 350 spots mm-hmm. with their freshman class. Um, Howard is getting like 50,000 plus applications for like 2,500 spots. And so these are highly competitive institutions. You know, there they're are our, our Ivy Leagues, uh, so to speak. And so we have to hold them dear. And I know there is a challenge with um, alumni of HBCUs not holding on and not, you know, giving back and, and contributing. So I think when we hear about stories like this, um, it's a rallying call for us to have more of a presence um, be, you know, boosters if we're able. There are many reasons why we can. A lot of times we're the first people in our sure. families to attend college, the wealth gap. So we don't have the same uh, financial opportunities as, you know, a predominantly white student base at PWI, like a Harvard has a multi-billion dollar um, uh, a fund. So it's, it's, it's harder for us. I hope that I, I want to see FAMU survive this. My former executive producer um, at MSNBC, Denise Hendricks, is a FAMU yeah. grad. Obviously, Andrew, like good people come out of FAM. Um, and I, I don't know who's more obnoxious, an HU graduate or a FAMU graduate. Watch it. Uh, Watch it. <laughs> well, because I already know. I'm like, who is going to be the most? I'll leave FAMU uh, alone. But uh, no, it's when, okay. when, we beat Howard, when, by the way. We're, that's where we're going to be at. Uh, when, well, uh, when Vice champions. President becomes President Harris, I'm like, who's going to be more obnoxious there? The AKAs or HU graduates? <laughs> I don't know, because on the vineyard, it's hard to tell. It's ridiculous. <laughs> They're going to be trying to stroll on the White House lawn. They're going to be at rallies at press conferences oh. about HU, you know, it's oh, going to be a whole thing. So I just, I, I love and have such love for um, HBCUs. And I, I, I hate to see, you know, it does sound like this is an intentional damaging move mm-hmm. yeah. to the school. And I'm happy and we, that um, Angela and Andrew wanted to spotlight this because it's I just, an issue that needs to be. Yeah, I wanted to just remind people the reason this whole thing started was this um, fraudulent donation um, that came from this man, Gregory Jerami or Garami, who none of us have heard of, who was half masked at the um, at, the, at the at the yeah, at the at the um, graduation. So we are praying for fam, um, yeah. honorary Rattler here, and just fam know you that today, we are. Fam you today, fam you tomorrow, fam you forever. And that's how we'll stand. Ten toes down with Tiff on the rest of the HBCUs and black people everywhere. All power to the people. We're going to go to this next topic. Andrew, hit us with that LULAC, Rainbow Coalition. Let's go. Yeah, y'all. We'll get, and, and for the uh, benefit of the listeners, we'll maybe dive even deeper on this whole Black Brown Coalition building in the future. But I did want to just quickly acknowledge and we've known this for a long time, Latinos being the, uh, the as of 2020, the second largest, um, uh, first largest minority group in the country, second to only um, non-Hispanic whites uh, in the country. But y'all, the reason why this is also a particular import, one, LULAC, an orga- organization that is now almost 100 years old. Uh, it's the League of United Latin American Citizens is what LULAC stands for. Mm-hmm. Um, for. For those of us who know, if you're in the black community, the NAACP is the equivalent 
within the Hispanic community um, um, uh, uh, of a LULAC per se. It is also regarded as sort of being on the more conservative end of 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 um, Latino national organizing groups. And they have avoided endorsing presidents, but they feel that the moment is so dire that the rhetoric and the promise coming out of not only Project 2025, but Donald Trump himself, um, only supported further by his maniatic uh, 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 vice president, um, um, homeboy, um, Somebody can give me his name. I, Vance, J.D., sure. <laughs> James David Vance. James David Vance. Okay. Did he get that before Hillbilly Elegy or did that come out? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, Joy started to call him James David, so now I will only refer to okay. him as James David. Okay. It definitely David. sounds like a former no, general of, <laughs> uh, so it definitely sounds like a former Confederate general's name, but w- whichever. Um, uh, <laughs> Harris and Waltz are the recipients of this important endorsement. And it started me thinking, y'all, that I have long been a bit of a contrarian on the forecasting of black and brown and the future of what a political alliance could look like for America's growing black and brown community, which will by 2045, I believe, overtake um, non-Hispanic whites in America as the largest uh, majority uh, in the country. I have not always assumed that to equal political alliance leading to political and public policy solutions that meet the needs of both communities or really all communities. Um, That being a shared, I don't know, goal of this browning of America. I, I accept what the demographics are telling us. I don't necessarily know that I've drawn a complete and total conclusion around what the future of politics and the future of alliance building and shared vision, mission, goal, achievement means for this browning of America. And I'm curious to know whether or not y'all had thoughts about whether one automatically equals the other. Clearly it does not. Um, But Andrew, you know, you and I, we've talked about this and I think you raise a really good point. Um, one, with the Latino community, uh, you talked about the size, their size in this country. And I remember the year they eclipsed black voters as the largest number of eligible voters. That's and right. I, key, I punctuate that word eligible because they're still not the largest number of registered voters. Correct. Um, black people remain the largest community of color when it comes to registered voters. So then you have to ask the question, why aren't more um, of uh, people in the Latino community registered and participating in the process? Um, I also think in, in the Latino community, uh, and as I speak about this, I want to be clear um, I am speaking about this as a guest observing the culture, not a member of the culture, because mm-hmm. I know Always. I would have an issue with people who didn't look like me talking about right. uh, black people, uh, especially black voters um, with the Latino community is very disaggregated. You know, people are from different countries of origin, uh, which have their own different experiences. Um, and even within those countries, there are Afro Latinos who have a very different experience from white presenting Latinos in those countries. So they don't move um, as a solid block, you know, like. Like most people, they're not a homogenous group of people. So it is really interesting to see Lulac come out and take this bold stance of uh, in- endorsing uh, Vice President Harris. I'd like to see that. I think it's a part of coalition building. I think this is a point that Angela has been making. Um with her encouragement about going on Fox News and things like that, I go and meet people where they are. Um, there is a significant amount of people in the Latino community turning 18 um, every year. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're, the coalition right. uh, tends to grow. There are some conservative beliefs. That while, while the media was paying so much attention to black men, uh, this disproven myth, yeah. Um, that they were voting for Trump. The Latino community, actually, the Latino uh, men, the data actually does support that they're more and increasingly um, sedu- seduced by the Republican Party and becoming Republican voters. So that requires some, some. I think we should be paying attention and have curiosity about our fellow countrymen. Asian American Pacific Islanders are the fastest growing demographic in this country. Also a community that's very disaggregated. So when we see this data, this data is very rarely disaggregated where you see, well, is this a South Asian person? Where yeah. are they from? Um, so I think as we approach a time where there's no racial majority in America, we are going to have to shed 
um, some of our xenophobia, xenophobia, have more curiosity about our fellow countrymen, and also learn to, Andrew, I'm stealing this, and I, oh. I don't want people to give me credit, because this is Andrew's, um, but not letting it capture our imagination. You know, Andrew, you've made the point about how the whiteness and the white structure of America, we can't even imagine what a democracy that served us looked like, and even now in our voting, it's like, who are white people going to vote for, because yeah. that's where we'll put our vote. We have to start leading with conviction. We don't always have to do that, and so I think this is a good practice of, of us doing that. The Republicans um, for uh, Kamala Harris had 60,000 people on their call. I don't know yeah. how much money they, they raised. Maybe you guys do. But this is what coalition building looks like. And I yeah. think it's uh, why we are seeing Donald Trump act like a, a cornered, wounded animal uh, flailing about. Because I, I believe in my spirit, it is written. Yeah. It is written. Amen. She will be President Kamala Harris. Uh, we will be at inauguration. Yeah. Everything in D.C. is already sold out. It it is this is a train that has left the station. It cannot be stopped. It is not a revolution. It is evolution. And you either get on board here or you will be fossilized and left behind. That's prophecy. Come now on, y'all just gotta prophet. show up and make it real. Right. <laughs> That's it. And so with that. Speaking of making it real and not having our imagination captured, um, many of you have all have manifested and prayed for a more ever present. Native Land Pod, and we will be um, streaming live Monday through Thursday next week at the Democratic National Convention. We have some amazing guests. We have some guest co-hosts that we are going to roll out um, this week um, that are really, really exciting. And I know that um, Lolo on our side dropped our little graphic. Our graphics are fly. I mean, things are going to be really awesome. I'm still going to be in uniform, but y'all, on Thursday, we're wearing white. Even if you're not at the DNC next week, make sure you are wearing your white. I'm going to get my chucks. I'm copying our friend Brittany. Is. We didn't talk about Brittany three times today, Tim, but I'm going to wear my chucks on Thursday with a white suit. I'm I trying to find chucks. it right now. It's you got to get some. to the Girl. suffrages. You got to get some. It's too bad we don't wear the same shoe size. So you know how to order some extra pair just in case something doesn't come. I'm going to order some, but she can, ordered, I can order She online. only orders some because here. the last one, in case they get scuffed. You know, she can't. No, I <laughs> order some in case no they don't come marks. through. But Andrew, get some I'm chucks and we're wearing wearing denim. Me and you are going to wear denim. You know, Tim is a rebel. The podcast. I bought a denim dress. It depends on how we it bunches it bunches up on me though, so we'll see how it looks. We'll, bunch well it here's down. the thing, Andrew. You know it. that you and I are normally gonna be in uniform. Tiff is normally the rebel. The podcast people be mad. They'd be like, "Why is Tiff not in uniform? What is she doing?" <laughs> Get information, Tiff. They were so mad at Essence. So yeah, come on, Tiff. We Get information. Right. Okay. As best I should have kept my white on at Essence for our panel. I changed in the car and put on my dress because yeah, I thought mad. that would match denim better. But then they were both. Angela had on those. I love those little shorts that you wore. The underneath. She didn't want to wear them at first, but I they did. were adorable. Oh, I thought Super it was adorable. a onesie. It was a onesie. Tiff is just making stuff up, but it's okay. Oh. <laughs> well, they, they're short. There was a onesie, but it was on like skirt. shorts with a, a white sheer. Um, skirt over. It was real mm-hmm. cute. Well, y'all, anyway, I, I had we'll be in uniform. I'll be in uniform. Years. I don't know if I'm going to wear this denim dress, but denim. I'm definitely wearing white. Tiff, send Thursday. me a picture of it and definitely try to figure out how we can do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday like as well. If we could, if, it, if it's a denim outfit. I only element. have one denim outfit. Okay. I ordered so, all mine. They got here this week. We'll have to figure it out. What did you and say? And then I'm going to tell y'all what I we got. I ordered all of mine. They got here this week. You ordered all denim outfits? Yeah. I am oh, so good. proud of you. That's incredible. Well, let me try to find Beyonce some denim since she's going to be out of uniform. <laughs> she, put, I, I am she did make sure my makeup was booked, though. Thanks, Tiff. Yeah, Angela didn't mess up the whole makeup. No, I she's didn't. arranged Sean my haircut. Okay. All right. Oh, and then Andrew's going to do my ponytail. Gotcha. Andrew was we'll doing get some behind the scenes footage for y'all, too. Yes. I am excited about BTS, that. Yes, Tiff. Please. God. BTS. But you guys, I just want to point out to this podcast, we keep getting BTS and y'all never see it. So That's we've true. been writing us. Tiff has been like, I Get put BTS. all my BTS it in the folder. It stays on the phone. You did? Oh, I yeah, keep when mine you, when for you those, dropped um, the Native um, Land folder, I uploaded it there. Uh, sorry. I, did and I, to do it. And I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. But I'll, 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 I'll tell, I loaded mine. I'll but tell I want y'all to know what we're going to argue about in Chicago. I want to hear. Y'all know we're going to eat. We gonna argue about who paying for dinner. I owe Angela a nice dinner. Oh. Um, I owe Angela plenty. Uh, um, Andrew well, rather plenty of nice so dinner. So I won't be arguing. <laughs> I'm, gonna say, well, I I'm taking this to a very nice Tim dinner. Tim must one have night. got cashed out. She can bet. She can buy my dinner every night. Then there it is. Well, no I got. Uh, uh, I will tell y'all. She said, I, "Well, um, that this means is no. just how how we move in community." <laughs> Angela had an opportunity that she couldn't take and sent it my way. 
um, a paid opportunity, and that's how community Praise moves. Lord, it wasn't that like I can't she, do it. It was like rich. put this money in my Praise sister's pocket. That means she got some money, Andrew. She paying Praise us. Lord, I'm, out here, I'm out here like, who wants some deep dish? All right. Who wants no, some deep no, 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 no. On the deep dish night, I'm going to buy deep dish. You can buy the expensive. Uh, <laughs> I think she ought to One of the restaurants it. she finds. Yeah, she no, gave no, us no. all this drama over this piece. Andrew, I'm taking that one because that's the cheap one. Follow me, friend. Let's go. Yes. Pay attention. Well, anyway. I'll so take we all got of them lots of free. events. You guys, yes. I know there are a couple polls up. We said we were going to poll you every Tuesday. Make sure that you click that link in our bio on Instagram. Take that poll. Send us who you want to see on the show. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And just so we're very, very clear, I'm Angela Rye. That's Tiffany Cross. That one is Andrew Gillum. We got Drop 82 it. days. We're not doing before- calls to action. Nah, that's, that is the call. Oh. Drop it, girl. Drop it. I just had one call to action. Okay. Oh, see how this works? have mercy. I just Oh, my call to action right. is simple. Um, she will never been, let me be great. She I'm always got to mess up my clothes quick. and my commercial mm-hmm. throws. Mm-hmm. Go to My bad. I got a real simple That's call. Nice yes. Y'all, people complain that we're only on once a week. I We really need, if, if y'all want to see us more, we're going to be on every day at the DNC. We want you all to break YouTube. Because break it. y'all, so we crash YouTube. Break There's it. so many of y'all. You yeah. complain about what you see on the cable news panels. We are here. We're going to be live. Share it. Watch it. Post it. Reshare it. Repost it. Make it trend. Whatever Mm -hmm. you can do, because that gives us the opportunity to do more of this, to broadcast more. So show up for for us. We're going to show up for y'all. That's my only call. There it is. Y'all show up. I will put my (laughs) behind the scenes on the internets of Tiffany. Oh, and, and my ponytail. And yes, um, thank you, Tip, for that. We definitely are hitting y'all hard on this. Watch us every day next week, Monday through Thursday. Tell Tip to get her denim because she's trying to rebel. <laughs> Make sure you take these polls. You can put in the comments and Tip, wear denim and eat deep dish. We'll take all of that. We are 82 days away from the election. I'm Angela Rye. That's Tiffany Cross. That's Andrew Gillum. We are Native Lamb Pie. We welcome Bring you home. home. We welcome you to Chicago next week. We can't wait to see y'all. Make sure you tune in, you subscribe, you rate and review the show, and always drop your comments and your questions. Send them to us so we can get them things up. We appreciate y'all. We love you. Welcome home. Welcome, welcome home. home. Welcome home, y'all. See y'all in the shot. Thank you for joining the natives. Intentional with the info on all of the latest. Rod Gillum and Cross connected to the statements that you leave on our socials. Thank you sincerely for the patience. Reason for your choice is clear. We're so grateful. We took the oath to execute roles. Yeah, faithful. Preserve, defend, and protect the truth. Even if painful. Welcome home to all of the natives. We thank you. Welcome home, y'all. What's welcome up, home. sis? Native Land Pod is a production of iHeartRadio in partnership with Reason Choice Media. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.